Welcome to today's episode of the Redback Revival Sing Along Show. I'll be your host today. My name is Charlie Sexton. I'll be leading this wonderful, amazing choir that's gathered here behind us. We've got some uh, very talented musicians that are just going to show out for you today. Um, growing up, I always sang out of this little uh, 1951 Church of God hymnal, and it's wonderful and we love it. But we wanted to pay tribute today to a legendary songwriter, uh, passed away in 2015 at the age of 93, uh, Brother Mosey Lister. So we just made up a little Redback Hymnal 2.0 with some of Mosey's songs in it. So the choir is going to sing those for you. And this very first one, probably one of his most famous ones, says, I'm feeling mighty fine. <laughs> you're enjoying today's show and that you're singing along with these old songs written by uh, our old friend Mosey Lister. Uh, this is just a beautiful, beautiful song and, it, and uh, the choir coming in on the chorus is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful song called While the Ages Roll. Hope you enjoy this.
song of praise will have just Would you hold that for me? Thank you. I love you. Hey, I get to do all kinds of stuff. I get to go all over the place and whatnot. What is it? I thought you had done that and gone to heaven and got your angel Don't wings. Don't touch my wings. Or my wangs. Your wangs, yeah. 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 That's sharp as a tack, though. Yeah. I, I was on the way up here, I seen there's a new, a new chicken wing stand. I think it's an Asian guy. It was called Wang's Wangs. <laughs> wangs Wangs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen out. Let's say it. Hey, listen. You ever get scared? You ever have to fly anywhere? Yes. Do you get yeah. scared to fly? Are you nervous? No, I don't get scared because I believe what the Bible says, low, I'll be with you always. Well, all right. So you don't like to fly. So you like low altitude. Low altitude, That's what you're into. Yeah. All right. Well, I get that. Y'all, it had been about, I don't know, probably six years ago now, uh, I got booked to do this date up in Louisville, Kentucky. And I was so excited. I had two nights. And it was really cool because I was going to get to leave from home and fly up to Louisville and then fly straight home. A lot of times go out. You know how it is. You're gone sometimes a week or two at the time. Well, I called my mama and I said, hey, listen, I want you to go with me. We're going to go. How she do? She's doing all right. She's That's doing all right. We're gonna, sweet. We're going to go to Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. All right. And I, and I said, we're going to go up there. We'll do two nights. Then we'll come on back home. And she said, you going to fly? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, no, I ain't going. Mama ain't never flew. And I said, well, listen, I done bought the tickets. I done got this thing set up. We're going to go, right? Yeah. Man, Charlie, we got down to Atlanta to the airport. We got on the, on the airplane. It was right in the middle of the afternoon. Beautiful bright blue sky, perfect day to fly. Yeah. We get on the airplane. I got mama sitting right there by the window. I'm sitting right here beside her. We get up in the air. We fly to Louisville. Not a bump in the road. It was beautiful. Had a great flight up there. Road. We done two nights. Got ready to come back home. We get on the airplane. Don't focus on the wrong part of the story. We got on the airplane coming back. Well, they had messed up the tickets on the way home. So yeah. they had me sitting here by the window, and they had Mama sitting behind me by the window. And they had this, this little fella, God love him. He was maybe 110 pounds soaking wet. He was a grown man, you know, but he, you, yeah. you know the type. He was just nervous. Boy, I mean, he nervous as a cat at the dog show. And we're sitting there, and we're sitting on the plane. I'm, I'm, oh, Charlie, I'm a superstar, buddy. I'm wearing black britches. I got on a black shirt, black sunglasses. We, he sits down beside me. and uh, He thought you was Elvis. I don't know. I don't know who he thought it was. He was just nervous, but I could tell he was nervous because when he sat down, he went, Whew. it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We're going to be all right. He's scared about that airplane ride, right? Yeah. We're sitting there. And, Charlie, we had done sit there for a good, I don't know, a good 10, 15 minutes past the time we're supposed to have been in the air. And I'm thinking, we're late. We're going to be here for half the day, you know. Well, about that time, they closed the door on the airplane. Yeah. All right. Here we go, right? Sitting there. Another 10 minutes. Still ain't went nowhere. And I'm thinking, all right. Well, about that time, the pilot comes on the speaker. Yeah. He says, uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard flight number 321. We're flying nonstop service from Louisville, Kentucky into Atlanta, Georgia. 
We're currently standing by here at the gate waiting on some sandbags to arrive. During co-pilot Johnson's inspection of the exterior of the craft, he located some rather sizable holes in the cargo bay on the right side of the plane. Oh, no. So we're going to move all the luggage from the right side over into the left side, put the sandbags in the right side so that we fly nice and level down to Atlanta. The weather in Atlanta is currently 74 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Be on the way shortly. Nothing to worry about. Just a couple of holes in the plane. A couple of holes. We're sitting there. He, he unkeys that microphone. The boy sitting beside me, he goes, uh, uh, hey, man, uh, what did he say? Well, Bertha's sitting about eight rows in front of us. Y'all know who Bertha is. Yeah. It just fits her. I, everybody knows of Bertha. She's been in charge of everything since she stepped out of the womb. She's just in charge, right? Yep. Well, Bertha takes on herself to go, there's some holes in the airplane. <laughs> wow. Which was followed directly by, stewardess, honey, I need to get off and get a pinch of snuff. <laughs> well, no, ma'am, we've already closed the door. Nobody can get off or on until yep. we get to it. Well, we sat there and we sat there about another 15 minutes. The plane goes bump and we all start pushing back from the gate, right? Yeah. Here we go. I'm sitting there. We get out, taxi down the taxiway, turn out onto the runway. And just as we turn out onto the runway and that pilot starts throttling them jet engines up, and you can feel the whole plane a quivering. I'm sitting there with them black britches on and everything like this. And that boy, he turns to me and he goes, so, uh, whoo, whoo, whoo. What, what do you do? And Charlie, I couldn't help it. I turned to him just as serious as I could, and I said, I'm the angel of death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackson, that's good. My that mama good. hit me so hard behind from behind. When I woke up, she was buying him drinks and magazines and all kinds of <laughs> That's a true story. That's that was good. That's about the best thing you've ever done on this show. Did you like but, that? But still, you just need to go get back in the choir. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, uh, folks, we are so honored to have my sweet friend, Miss Denise Hopper. She's going to play a Mosey song. It says, Happy Rhythm.
By the time he went to heaven in 2015 at the age of 93, singer, songwriter, preacher, Mosey Lister had penned over 700 memorable songs. But his formative days as a singer were less than successful. As a youth, his mom and dad enrolled them in their middle Georgia church choir, only to be disappointed to learn that their child was basically tone deaf. It was suggested that he take up ear training by learning to play the violin. Determined to improve his musical ability, Mosey had dedicated himself to theory, harmony, and composition. After a stint in the U.S. Navy in World War II, Mosey married the love of his life, Wileen, and they moved to the bustling city of Atlanta, where Mosey became the original lead singer for the legendary Statesman Quartet. A few years later, he and group owner Hovey Lister, who strangely enough was not related, decided that Mosey should come off the road to become a full-time writer and to help manage the Statesman's office. During that amazing season, Mosey created some of the most loved lyrics in all of gospel music. In that day, you would be hard-pressed to find a traveling gospel group or soloist who had not recorded one of his compositions. From the Statesman and the Blackwoods to Porter Wagner and Elvis Presley, Mosey was riding high as these world-renowned artists used his songs to spread the gospel to every corner of the globe. The song that the Red Bat Revival Choir sings for you today is among one of his very best lyrics. It is such a comfort to know that there is a place to find shelter when the storms of life are raging high and that we can be held securely in the palm of God's hand till the storm passes by.
trust that <laughs> I trust that this show's been as big a blessing to you as it has been to me. Uh, we are so very thankful for the opportunity that uh, we're afforded by WATC. Uh, reach out to the station and let them know that you're enjoying the show, WATC.TV, or you can contact us directly at redbackrevival.com. Either way, uh, well, boy, this has been fun today. I hope you've enjoyed these songs by Mosey Lister. We sure have enjoyed singing them for you. And we're going to leave on a happy song that says, I've been changed. So until next week, I'm your host, Charlie Sexton, for the Redback Revival. Thank you.